Yehova Malak Olam Olamat Yehova Malak Yami Ragis Yehova Gadol Makarian Tios Yehova Elonai Yehova Elohi Kurios Tios Pantacreta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda et Yehova I Basilian Kurios Otios O Pantacreta Basilias Basilian Kai Kurios Kurion Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Olam Olam Yehova Dabar Shamiyam Im Yatseb Monan Alatanian Tian Sophian Isus Christos Elda at Yehova Derek Emona Bakar Mishpat Shava The Mega Logai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk, breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding that though we have been forsaken for a moment, that with everlasting love and His kindness, God the Father, will be and take care of us, provided when we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, using the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins through rebound, and in the liberty wherewith He has set us free in this church age. Being the children of light, as First Thessalonians 5.5 5 says for us, how we ought to be sober, how we ought to edify one another. Because the night is far spent and the day is at hand. We have been constantly mandated to arise, to awake, and to put on the new man that is put on Christ Jesus our Lord, so that we could walk as the children of light. Since <clears throat> The pilgrimage trip for us on this earth is to always have a clear concise towards the Lord that eating we shall eat and to live we shall live. In Genesis 1 it has been stated, eating you shall eat. Leviticus chapter 10 verse number 14 teaches to us a very great lesson in our life. A lesson which every believer has to learn. Though they may think it might refer to the people of the Levitical priesthood code, but we have a lot many things to learn, particularly from this chapter number 10, the principle and the duty of the priests. In the church age, every believer has been called to be the priesthood of the Lord just not to use it as a privacy of our priesthood to confess our sins and get back into the fellowship, 
But as the Levitical priests were given the mandate to teach them the difference between holy and profane, so we are here to teach in the world the difference between the children of light and the children of darkness. Understanding these things, what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date. Having a word of prayer, we shall continue by sanctifying ourselves to look upon the pale wonders of this great and unique word. And from verse number 14 of Leviticus 10, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to learn the word of God, we shall learn from it. Sanctify yourselves by the confession of your sins through rebound and let's learn this great and infallible and ignorant word of God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a marvelous revolution we have for us in the word of Lord. Without thy word of Lord in proper exegesis, we couldn't expound our thoughts to thy will. Let the Father, you have given us grace for the prayer of God, the Holy Spirit, to be indwelt in us by Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that every believer could understand that the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. And having to pray before thee as begging before thee, O Lord, you would send laborers more into this harvest. And in return, O Lord, every believer is having his ministry of reconciliation through the work of ambassadorship besides this priesthood. And if they would learn that importance in their life, what an impact we would be over here on this earth in making disciples of all the nations. Since your word is said to go and do it, there is nothing on this world which could hinder us, O Lord, except our unbelief. As that Father cried out in Mark 9, 24 and 25, O Lord, even we helplessly cry out before thee, O Lord, so that we could overcome our unbelief and look upon the obligations which are making us not to become disciples, joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias, and in return making disciples of all the nations. Help us, Father, to have a clean and clear conscience for us all the days of our life at every breath we take, so that we shall not be ashamed when we stand in the presence, but rather in return in everything, in order to glorify Thee, we have done our best in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not like Uzziah, to die like Perez Uzziah, but in return, as Apostle Paul said, in nothing we shall be ashamed, because to live is Christ and to die is profitable. To the section, Father, those who are listening to these words, we pray, grant them thy gracious grace upon them, so that they could understand the triumphant power of what you have given to us, and making display of our moderation among all men, since the Lord is near, and making these people to understand to be out from the prince of the course of the power of this air, and to be the children of faith, and walk by faith, when their obedience is ready to avenge every mannerism of disobedience in this world. As we study these things, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The lamp of Jehovah is the breath of man. And that lamp is nothing but the word of the Lord God. And that word of Lord God is the very breath that we survive. Coming to Leviticus chapter 10 in verse number 14, he says, The wave breast and the heave shoulder you shall eat in a clean place. Not that the place what today the people may think, since COVID-19 has always been there in their minds in the fears. They need to have a sanitized place to make their affairs to go along. Or they may think a clean place free from every mannerism of sheer rot. But here the word clean in the Hebrew teaches to us Tahir. 
and that meant to say to be pure and the thing what we read in Genesis 1 when he planted the tree and he said to them in chapter 2 not 1 eating you shall eat that's what the Hebrew says and dying you shall die when he's mentioning there dying you shall die he's teaching to us the importance that first you will be spiritually dead and then later on you will end up in your physical standards likewise eating you shall eat the first thing what you should eat before you could eat or drink or even think of anything in your life as physical food the first one is should be always the spiritual food in first Samuel 319 we read none of the words of Samuel fell upon the earth the word in the Hebrew there is eretes, the inner man, 776, what we call to be the soul. Because the earth will also refer to Adama, that is, the dust from where the man came. Breathing into his nostrils the breath of lives, as when Christ our Lord our God died. The, twice the word in the Hebrew, that's plural, which has been used. First, giving up the soul and the spirit and then committing unto the Lord God his body. Likewise, when the man was being made, breathing into his nostrils this breath of life so that he could become a living soul. And when man sinned, he lost the fellowship with the Lord God. Therefore, John 3, 3 through 8, teaching to every member of the human race to understand that they should be born again. The same thing what Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. And then he teaches, soulish man cannot understand the things of the spirit. That is what your inner man, the soul. But in John 3, we have a privilege to learn that we shall be born again in the spirit, the human spirit. And the procedure by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, teaching to our, teaching to our inner man is that when we are always under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is He who shall teach our human spirit. And in return, our human spirit could change the facets of the soul. Because already in the soul, you will have your human viewpoint. The details of this world, the cosmos thinking, as we read in Ephesians 2, 2 for the word cosmos and eon. The collective mass of all the thoughts, feelings, emotions, will. Anything that is against the will of God the Father. So this cosmos thinking, whatsoever it is there, that has been always been filled in your soul. Therefore we need to look, being born again, regeneration, a believer is called as a trichotomous in nature. But whereas an unbeliever is called as dichotomous. The things why we have been called to be the children of light is that we have been born again, having in us the human spirit inculcated at the moment of salvation. And by faith alone in Christ alone, we have been granted graciously eternal life. So we know we are the children of light. We know we cannot slumber like the children of darkness and sleep. By wasting our gracious grace that has been given to us, in making disciples of all the nations. So we know very well, if ever you know, we have to eat in a clean place, pure place, tahir place. And having to become trichotomous in nature, first we need to clear the things to the God. Every day we have our account to be cleared. Therefore, even Writing to the Thessalonians, Apostle Paul says, Let a man not be idle. If he is idle, let him not, his own, not, not eat his food. But let him work with his own hands, and then let him eat his food. The same principle for us every day. You have a duty to carry your cross and follow my Christ and gather up the spiritual manna. And you have to grow up in that spiritual manna every day, gathering it out. And if you first don't gather up your word of God as you get up every day morning, better stop eating your physical food.
because you're not eating the food in a clean place as you may think sanitized place for you in this COVID-19. The clean place is what when your conscience is clear in your spirit converting that into your soul the doctrine of the word of God being taught by Lord God the Holy Spirit and having full knowledge epinosis knowledge and having a fear that every day you have to be the children of light and there will be no rest to our soul and spirit till we complete that day's target given to us. Every day you have to carry your cross. Moses in Deuteronomy 31-22, we read that. The self same day he went to write the song and he cleared his burden and he taught. And that is a man who is walking face to face with the law. Even Moses longed the day what we are today. He wanted to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but we have that indwelling entering ministry in this church age for us graciously granted because of the prayer of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in John 14, 16 and 17, begging to God the Father. As such, even we do not know what for you pray. You pray for the silly details of life, having to get the supplications to be favored before Jehovah. But you will never understand when you rejoice in the Lord always, doing the will of God the Father, and you pray your jubilation towards the Lord God to send those harvesters. And you pray for God the Father to send those harvesters because the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. What for you beg before God the Father? You beg before God the Father to perish a soul. No way, dear brethren. We have to beg before God the Father to save a soul. That's why we need to learn many things. Because when he said in the case of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 20, Today I shall abide in thy house. And the people thought he was as good as a sinner. And then Zacchaeus come out saying that I will give off of my property among anyone if I have taken by unjust means I will pay them fourfold back. And then Lord our God says, He is also the son of Abraham. I have come to seek, search and save the lost. Likewise, dear brethren, we need to be the people to put forth the things which we are losing day by day. And we have to be pleading before the Lord to save and seek the one that has been lost. That's why, dear brethren, very carefully the scripture stands recorded that it is not the will of God the Father that anyone should perish. He wants all to be saved and come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. Therefore, it is the great thing for us that Lord God the Father asks us to pray when Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, says in Mark, in Matthew 9, verses 35 through 39, pray for the laborers to be sent by God the Father because there is a lot of harvest, but the laborers are very few. And now we could pray when we are always pleading before the Lord for the standards of our physical life to be fulfilled, for the standards of the physical food to be fulfilled, material needs to be met. But do you know how God the Father never wants anyone to perish? Therefore, he sent his only begotten son, Mone Gine, the only eligible one to go to the cross. That whosoever believes upon him shall never perish. And the work that he has given for us, we can never wait. 
saying that we will have a time, a date, a period. No. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, in verse number 5 and 6, once again encouraging Timothy, he says, The gracious gift which I have given you by laying down my hands upon you before the completion of the can of scripture. He says to him, once again, you live up the fire or light up the fire. The Greek word is ana zu porion. Again, ana zu, life, that is to get back into life. Purion or puros or pur, the word is called as fire in the Greek. He says, once again, you put into fire or come back to fire. Many people today are not able to understand that they have the ministry of reconciliation. They have to be the kings in the presence of the Lord. They have to work their work in the standards of becoming great ambassadors to my Christ. They have gone cold. The time for us is to make you to wake up. Once again, anosoporion. Once again, get back to your life in great fire. Because today is the day, therefore we have been called the children of light. We have been said, today is the day of salvation. Teach them the paths of truth. Let them come and know and understand the ways of the Lord God. And we ourselves are not aware what is the way of the Lord God, then how we could make them come back to the will of Lord God. Therefore, we need to have that Psalms 38, 18, which says for us, I will nagad my twisted mind before thee, O Lord, and I will be ever alert that of my every sin. Are you ever alert? You are missing the mark of the glory of God. You are missing the mark of the work of the Lord. You are missing the mark to will, to obey the will of the Lord God and to do the work of Lord God. Have you ever been aware about that? But what are we doing? We are not at all worried. Every day we grieve, we sculpt, we wax, we lie. Though we have been called to be triumphant in Christ Jesus in every place we go, Second Corinthians 2.14 in spreading of his knowledge. Though we have been repeatedly said, let your candidature of election in Christ Jesus be made known to this man. Philippians 4, 5. For that cause you have to rejoice always because you are doing the will and the work of the Lord God. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything give thanks to God the Father, wherewith he shall supply you richly all the things that have been needed for us. Therefore, he says in Philippians 4, 8, search those things that in have virtue, that they have honesty, that they have the truth. And then he says for us again, because in this prince of the power of this air, it will divert your mind. It will not make you to become the kings. It will not make you to become the priests. As you have to be a priest, you have to eat in a very clean place. Not that a clean place meant to say where you can have everything sanitized. A clean place meant to say to have a pure consciousness to eat. If not, we are not laboring, then better don't eat, he says in Second Thessalonians for us. If you labor, labor in the word of the Lord. And if you are not laboring, then don't eat. The same thing in John 6, 27, he says, If ever you labor, labor for the food which perisheth not, rather than laboring for the food which perisheth. These things are very simple and very clear and very true for us to understand. Until unless you have your clear consciousness that today you have earned the word of God. Till the time, don't eat your physical food. If not, that is not a clean place. Therefore, the mandate for the pastor teachers once again daily teach the word of God. Weekly ones will not suffice. You are deceiving the church. Being slaves to two master, you cannot suffice because you are deceiving the flock. You may be a well preacher, you may be a well orator, you may be a well man to think and talk about many things. But the word of Lord God has given this duty as a pastor teacher and you have to be as a pastor teacher provided dedicating yourself in daily study of the word of the Lord and you have to study them in the original languages of the scriptures. If you don't have that study, better shut your mouth because you know some English or you know some regional languages to talk. 
because you are not able to realize you are not clean. You are not able to realize your mind is still distorted. And you are not able to nagad that before the word of the Lord God. And you think you are doing favor to my Christ, but you are becoming like Uzziah, who thought even he could do a favor when the oxen shook the Ark of the Covenant on the cart. And we should learn. When Lord God the Father has allowed us, it is like the way the people we are today, you know. We are the people who do not know how to serve the true Jehovah, our Lord. At Christ our Lord, our God in His grace has purchased, saying that this entire world being put upon in Christ, I will make them to be my disciples. And He has given this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in knowing them and teaching them so that they can know only when they learn and they can learn only when they have been taught. And on this principle, God the Holy Spirit has given for us this bona fide gift so that we could teach and we could make you to be become thorough people for the Lord, a people of joy, a people of gladness, a people of light, a people of understanding that we are of great honor in the presence of this Lord God. This is what we have to learn very carefully. But at what is happening? We are allowed to mount Ark of the Covenant as we read yesterday, Rakhaib, and then we come back to sit upon the mount and then we come back to lead in the standards of this bullock cart. And then what happens? Yet God the Father waits. And you know the deterioration of the oxen? And what does the oxen do? It tries to shake off. The same thing we are able to find the analogy in the present Christendom. Wherewith you need to learn very carefully. Though we have begun with the church age in the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost, and yet Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, gives instructions particularly to the church to be handled very effectively in the completed can of scripture, the bona fide gift of the pastor teachers in making disciples or causing them to become grammatias in the work of the Lord. They have come up mounting on the bullock cart, first of all, not having the way how they have to lead and worship the true Lord. And they have been led in the path like that bullock cart by the so-called Uzziah kind of pastors in our pulpits. And when the oxen is shaking, Uzziah wants to do a favor by catching out the Ark of the Covenant. And by that we meant to say what? We read the word, the error. Shal, shalal, that's the Hebrew word for it. Number one, in the Nephil stem, we write it is negligent. And the Hephil stem, it is called to be misled. So first of all, the pastor teacher is negligent not to know that he has to have a clear conscience to eat his food in a clean place by that he could say in, in complete heart of his soul, in the complete heart of his spirit, and say that, yes, today I have labored unto the Lord, then I can eat the physical food. That's what we read yesterday in Matthew 9, 20, 35 as well. The first thing what Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, set forth a pattern, he who goes back to the synagogues to teach. And then what? Preach the gospel, second one. And then what does he do? He is trying to cleanse out your gnosis. And that's what we read, the sicknesses your moral disabilities. The simple principle, what we read, it meant to say you have to have a clean and clear conscience before the Lord. If you don't have a clean and clear conscience like that Samaritan woman when she was being asked, get your husband, she says, no, I don't have my husband, either the fifth one who is with him, even he's not my husband. Do you have that conscience to ask before the Lord and see yourselves that you're lacking and you have not grown up to become the disciples of the word of God, neither you have joined to become the grammatures of the Lord God in making disciples in the entire world. Can you answer in your conscience that clear statement? And since you lack, you will not be cleansed of your sicknesses. And how it has been failed? Because the pastor teacher is failed to distinguish the word of God accurately in exegesis. Therefore, the reason for your sicknesses, the reason for your diseases is your pastor teacher under whom you go. Therefore, it's a tough job. But yet, as 
Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.6, Anazopurion. He will never compromise. He says, once again you light up the fire. Once again you live up the fire where you have been called in the church age. So don't hesitate to live such a fireful life in the Lord because time is short. Every breath you need to redeem. And every breath you need to march ahead. You don't have the time to say I will do it after 10 years or after I am retiring from the job. No. Every day, every day, every day, day by day, day by day. We learn a lesson from Moses, the self same day he did it. And the examination for Abraham was called in Genesis 22. He said, Lord, behold, I am. The word behold, Hina, we read that. It meant to say, Lord, you examine me in and out. I am here for your work. Because I know that when we walk by faith in the Lord, it is he who shall make the things to be impossible with men, and with Lord God the things could be easily possible. So he goes to such faith. And today he's asking us only one thing, go and make disciples. Why you worry about the world? To make disciples, first you should have to eat in a clean place. And that clean place also resembles first for believers to take in the word of God by the privacy of the priesthood. Because the life what you worth living is in the life, in the sphere, when you spend in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, thinking and meditating upon the word of Lord God and craving to God the Father to give you more. That's the only life worth that you're living. Apart from that, if you're grieving and squelching and vexing and resisting and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then your life is not worth. You will be like in the sphere of an unsaved person, as we read in Ephesians 2.2. 2, because of his harmartia, we sing the mark. You're as good as an unsaved person. So we need to be alert about these things, dear brethren, very carefully. Because if you have not taken up every day the word of Lord God more than the necessary food, that's what we read in Psalm 119 in the death march, more than my necessary food, as even Job says, I have taken your word, O Lord, because thy word is the life. And he says in 107 of Psalm 119, how much I am depressed. And such state, again, to come back to life, it is only thy word which revives me. In the same manner, to lift up or light up your fire that has been in you by the gift of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because every believer has minimum one gift. They have the ability to rule, as he said in Luke chapter 19, he went to a far country, and for them he gave his charge for some ten talents, for some five, and again for other one one. The ten out of ten he made, five out of five he made, and the one says, you are an austere man. And then God the Father says, why haven't you kept my money with the user or come back with interest? Therefore, because you say me such kind of an austere man, I will judge you on the same words. Take that one gift or one talent. And he says, give it to the person who is having ten, who has made ten, because he knows. The same thing to whom much is given, much is expected. The same thing he says, the one who has more will be given more. We have a lot of things to learn from Genesis to Revolution in Exegesis. And you may think who is worried why we have to come every day. You may think why we need to carry our cross and follow my Christ. You may think enough is enough for us every day. We have some portion to meditate every morning. And we give to the Lord the things to the Lord and the things to the Caesar, the things to be given to the world. So we are just happy to pay them one verse as a calendar promised verse as these people take from the calendar on that particular date. And what they say, they are happy with that and they will continue with that. But at the end, what happens? They will ruin their life because they will be like that one talent person, one verse in a day, one talent person. They're digging and keeping it inside the ground. 
But when the kingdom of the Lord God comes, he hasn't seen in you the growth because you are empty. Skolazo. You have become a argon, not to work. Your ground that has been given, you have made it to be encumbered. So what does he do? He makes you to take out from that and he calls you are a sluggard, foolish steward. And from there on what we read, to the one who is having ten and the people will ask, why to the ten? Why can't you give to the five persons? He says, to whom much has been given, much has been expected and they will have more. That's what we are in a period of now, having more. Your entire life is not enough in disclosing the great facts. What do we find in the exegesis of Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21? Your entire life is not enough, dear brother. You cannot suffice. Every day you think you can just pass down. In the standard of the word of Lord God, what we are having in comparison to exegesis, what has been there yet in the Bible to be taught and expounded, it is as good as taking only one single drop of water from an entire big ocean of the Lord. Therefore, he says, give to the person who is having ten, because he is capable. He knows how to use wisely the time. He knows how to become in day by day the children of light. And he knows where to invest the things pertaining to the will and to the glory of the Lord. Therefore, Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 7, If you are married, be as if you are not married. If you have property, be as if you are not able to enjoy that property because time is short. First go and do the work and the will of the Lord God because when once we are out of this world, as even Job says, Lord, you have numbered my days and in those days you know very well when I sin. So when we have those words, we have to be worried and look that our every day, every moment has been reckoned by Lord God for his glory. Therefore, we need to look being in the church age as kings, what is our product? We need to understand as priests how we can eat in a clean place. As ambassadors, how much we are able to proclaim every day by day the salvation of the Lord. And when you're not becoming disciple, did ask, we read that in Matthew 9.35, then you can never open up your mouth in teaching others the gospel. And when you're not able to clear from that work, when you're not able to fulfill these two works, then you will have in you no source that is called as sicknesses. You will have before the Lord moral blemish or the blemish where we call to be clear account in the Lord. You know, Satan would have claimed before my Christ, before God the Father regarding the life of my Christ. And at Christ the Lord our God says, when Satan comes, he does nothing to find in me a fall. When Lord God the Father would cross-check a report concerning you as Christ of Lord of God claims saying before Job, to Job or in the case of Job before Satan, have you seen my servant Job? He walketh upright, he fears me. And then do you know what Satan claims? By the same manner, every believer has been bought before the law. And it will be said before Satan, have you seen such and such saint of me on this earth? And then Satan would give, I have so many accusations against him to find fault. Because Christ our Lord of God in humanity, when he was in the same powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what today you and I enjoy, the seven spirits in one spirit, he walked blameless before the Lord. He walked upright, always doing the will of the Lord. Never in his mind he had that moral blemish, as we read yesterday, Agatha Sune, to have the divine goodness, you should be Hagios made, and you should be Amomas. And the word Amomas is very important for us. No internal and outward blemish, everything is clear. And then you have to be produced before the Lord, called as Agnaketas. So here he says, you are no source in Matthew 9.35. That meant to say, you don't have that standards of moral blemish first. And as long as we have that moral blemish, he calls it to be sickness. And that's what it happens, dear brethren. 
He goes to clean them from their sickness. Only when their heart and mind is straight with the free will to do the will of the Lord. And at what happens? And at what happens? We are coming to the people where there is no proper word of God. And yet, when there is no proper exegesis or isagogics and categories in our pulpits, the things that happens to us is no moral blemishes to be cleared. And since there is no proper word of God in our pulpits, the nosas leads to have in them moral blameness. And that internal blemish of that moral blameness or having to be inward and outward to reflect the same thing because as a man thinketh, so he is. Because Christianity talks about renovating the standards of thinking in the word of the Lord. That's what Christianity is all about. So, we have to learn when none of the words fell upon the ground called as eretes, we have to understand soulish man can never understand the things of the spirit. The natural man cannot look, but we have to be the people to understand the things in the standards as per the word of the Lord God in spiritual terms. Therefore, several times whenever there will be many critics who talk about this word of God saying that they have such errors, they do not understand the exoteric, either the esoteric view of the Bible. They do not even understand the things, how they have to be taken out from the original languages of the scriptures in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. They do not understand these things. And yet, what they do? They try to talk about because they are still natural. They haven't believed in the Lord. Like many critics in the past, many critics in the present, and the many critics who will be in the future as well. As many people think they can change even the standards of this Bible, but they will not. They cannot. Because the heaven and the earth will pass away, but every word of Lord God will abide and stand forever. So keeping these things in mind, we have to learn that the spiritual things in the word of Lord God reign forever. And therefore he says, the word, it has to fall on your spirit. And it has to fall on your spirit, you need to be born again in my Christ. Being not born again in the Lord, you cannot understand the things of the spiritual phenomena of this word of God. But today when we look, we find men being to the core, not born again, though they may be having a lip service like Uzziya, but when it comes to the real service before the Lord, they are great failures. And the standards why we find this is purely because the shepherds have changed. There have been many, many, many shepherds, as we read yesterday in Jeremiah 12.10 who have made the pleasant place of Lord God into a place having to be known as inhabited place or wilderness place, a place where there is no doctrine. So, dear brethren, the first thing in Matthew 9.35 we read our life. It says, first you have to grow up in the doctrine of the word of God, become grammatias, joining as disciples. And then you will open up your lip to do the service of Lord God in teaching and preaching out the gospel. And then we find the third thing. Then the gnosis, the sicknesses of your inner blemish, so that you could be cleansed, so that you could be clean, so that you can understand truly what is that we are here to clean. And if you don't have your account clear with the work of Lord God, it is better for us to think that day we are dead in the sight of the Lord. Or we are just killing the days to pass the time on this earth. We think we can give one verse and that calendar verse is enough for us. And the things pertaining to the word of God and to the life of God to become his disciples and to do the work of God. We have been just dead. It will be like that one man who hid the talent in the ground. And when he hid his talent in the ground, he calls for us to be alert that the man who is having much will be given much and expected much. And though the man he seems that is having much, yet even that what he thinks he has will be taken out. 
the same principle for us as well we have much in the exegetical word of Lord God we have a lot to study in the Bible doctrine we have a lot to work in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and we have to dig in and every day we have to be like the children of light and we have to be the people not to let go the time in this world but at what are we we are walking out like that one talented guy because though we have been given much and expected much in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we love yet go at, to go, to grieve, to squelch, to wax, and to lie. And that's what it happens, dear brethren, in this church age. Every breath we go. That's why we need to learn, which says, be aware about the cosmos thinking of this world. The same thing in that, milk, in that second Samuel chapter 6, when they're getting that Philistine style, the Ark of the Covenant, the same bull or oxen shook so that the Ark of the Covenant could fall from the bullock heart. So what does they do? So Uzziah goes to touch his hand. And Perez Uzziah was the result. Likewise, we are serving such kind of a true Jehovah Lord of a God and knowing not the simple procedure that is to be always under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we have to be led through. We have to go through and we have to be the people in doing such work. What happens? Then quite obviously, we are being led like this Uzziah kind of shepherds in our pulpits and therefore every day you neglect. And every day you don't make up your account to be clear before the presence of the Lord. Every day what you do, you just go back as saying, weekly once is enough, monthly once I will go and pay the tithes to the Lord and that's enough and it's going to protect me. So like the way how Uzziah misled them, the way how Uzziah made them to be negligent because first he was negligent in his work and the impact of that pastor will have the same thing. The same verse in Jeremiah 12.10, once again to quote, Many pastors, many rub, numerous than the abundant. And who are this? They are the pastors, he claims. And if the pastor do not execute the passage, if the pastor do not make it to become the missionaries in teaching the word of Lord God, if the pastors do not make you all to realize and cleanse your gnosis moral blemish before the Lord God, and if your pastors are not able to make you to understand the general debility in you or becoming soft in you is purely because you still hold in you that moral blemish. Because you are not working the work of the Lord for what cause he has made you. For example, to tell you, the nature obeys the word of Lord God because he created it and it originally obeys the will of God the Father, performing, giving daylight and nightlight and all the things what all giving in the harvest of the later rains or the former rains. The nature is obediently doing its work. But God the Father made man in his own image and calls him to be the glory of God on this earth and worship him in spirit and in biblical truth and to be a people of choice, to be a people of honor, to be a people of great joy, to be a people of great light to the world. And this man has turned out and become corrupted and he became a man to the world the way how he has to be a man to God. The relation what he should have towards God, he completely changed and transformed it. And he became a man to the world, as if thinking his life on this earth is permanent. Do you know when we will have rest? Do you know when we can have relax or recreation for our life? When we fight a good fight to the Lord every day and finish our course on this earth. Therefore, in Second Peter, he says to have your entrance abundance. To your virtue add knowledge, temperance, come back with charity and with brotherly love. And he goes on to teach them. Those who are walking in these terms, they are not blinded. They will not be barren, but their entrance will be great in the presence of the Lord. It will be of a great abundance. And these things we need to learn because every day for us, it's a battle to redeem the time of the Lord for the glory of the Lord. The time what have been given for you in this earth, if you would really believe, dear brethren, he doesn't ask you to pay back your 24 hours, but he asks you to give 2 hours, 40 minutes, the tithe of your time every day to renovate. And in that he has designed for you the details of this life. You know, the details of this life are just like a carry bags to you. For example, what to eat, what to drink, you need to work. How to take care of your work, you need to spend time with your children. 
Therefore, Apostle Paul says, I am single. Better you also be single if you can have the gift of celibacy with you. If not, don't burn, marry. After you're getting married, be aware to impress the Lord. Because marriage is also one of the greatest corporate witness for us on this earth. And these things we need to learn very carefully. Because being single, do not burn away. If you have a gift of celibacy, you will have a lot of time to spend before the Lord God rather than spending in this world and the lusts of this world. Therefore, dear brethren, he says, Be aware of the time, be aware of the day, be aware of the year, be aware of this month. Because you know very well the time is short. You know, you love to look upon saying that Neoniskas, the Greek word, which says again, Narims in the Hebrew. You would reach the age of 40, but you have not learned the responsibility towards God and towards your parents. And such people, he says, do she bears calling upon them and slaving them out. And that's what Elisha did, because their life on this earth is not worth. In the same manner, Uzziah, he would have trained and he would have taught, he would have learned. It is not the way that we need to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And definitely oxen will shake. Because they thought till that moment of Macon's threshing floor, the things were going smooth. But all things are possible with Lord God, as we read the same thing in Proverbs 21.1. The king's heart is in the hand of Jehovah. He knows how to change to fulfill the desires of him through it. And why not he can control this oxen when he taught the same lesson in 1 Samuel 6, stating about the Milkanic cow incident. They look, if it is by the plagues of Jehovah, this cow should go straight away into this field. They shall not turn left or right. Do not think when he spoke through the things pertaining to a donkey to correct a man. And do not think when he's there to teach them through the cock which could crow up. And do you not think when he's sending the food with ravens, the nature obeys to him. Do you not think when he makes the people to tell, particularly the Pharisees, asking them, Master, make your disciples to keep quiet. He says, if they keep quiet, stones cry out. And do you not think he calls us to be living stones? And how much more if the nature could do, then how much more we have to do? And above all, in the church age, it is our greatest and unique and highest privilege to be indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which even Moses longed for it, then how much more we should be internally and outward blemish clear, so that we shall not have any blame in us, how much more we have to work the works of Lord God, so that when Satan could claim, like the case of Job, and Lord God the Father could say, have you seen my servant Job? He could say, have you seen my servant and saint, followed by the name, what we have been given on this earth? Could you say that? Could you look into it? Could you make your life worth enough to stand before the Lord saying we are blameless? And do you know how much guilt we have before the Lord? Yet God the Father is long-suffering and patient. He doesn't want anyone to suffer. That he is waiting for everyone to come back to the will of God. And then how... A sinner could repent, there will be a great joy, he says. Out of this ninety-nine which I have in the sheep or in the fold, one which I bought back, I have a great joy. The same thing he says for us. Making every believer to be a disciple of the word of God, how great joy it would be for God the Father in his great grace that is bestowed upon us. How great joy he could have for us when looking upon our life. So that when Christ our Lord of God sets forth an example in the same seven spirits operating in him, he says for us the same thing what we read. There is no place for the devil where it can find fault in me. That's what we need to learn. Having them to eat in a clean place, Leviticus 10.14. Taher, the place which has to be pure. Having to eat your physical food, remember how you ate your spiritual food. If you haven't eaten your spiritual food, though you may eat in a very well sanitized place of this COVID-19 to say I am very hygienic and I am very pure and clear. Though you may say all these things, yet 
your heart is not cleansed before the Lord. And you will have sicknesses because that called as nosos in the Greek. And you will become debility malachians. And we read that word malachians. You become like homosexuality, lesbianisms and bestiality rather than having a right relationship with your right woman. In the same manner, having a right work of the Lord God to be done on this earth, you do the works like the way how they go for homo, they go for lesbianism, they go for bestiality. You do your works like that and you represent like that. Your natural use, you change it and you become reprobate to the core. Looking upon your life, having not the blemish to be cleared, you look like reprobates before the Lord. Therefore, you are weak. You are weak in performing the will of God, looking upon the life of Moses, the spirit what they have been led. Till 120 years we look, his vigor was not abated. And he calls them, his vision was not been dimmed. Neither the looking of the life of Caleb, he says, though I am 85, I have in me the vigor of 40. Do you know what is that word? Joshua having a different spirit, doing the will of God the Father. Even looking upon the life of Daniel, he did the same three times a day, kneeling down before the presence of the Lord and working out the works of Lord God. And you know what a great privilege it is for us when we go through such process in this life. You will not be worried about your sicknesses. You will be worried about only one thing. Let first have my cleansing process in my spirit and soul to be perfect to the word of Lord God. When you are internally free and clear in your blemish, your outward appearance will be great. And the way how the examinations will come in your life, like in the case of Job, you will not worry though it comes, because you know God the Father is testing you. Because you're carrying every day your work. You're carrying every day your cross. You're carrying every day to become the disciple. You're becoming every day to become as grown up as Grammatias. And the greater you come to become as a disciple and a Grammatias in the word of Lord God, the greater you will be burdened in your heart to preach the gospel of my Christ. And the greater you're doing the work of gospel, though you may not preach, but your holy manner walk of life, not becoming hindrance to others. But making the paths of Lord God straight, crying out in the wilderness the ways of Lord God and arising, awaking from the standards of this world and rising to the word of Lord God. You know what happens? You certainly have a great work. And when you're doing that, you don't have internal blemish because you're crying out for Lord. Therefore, he says, every believer has been predestined to conform to the image of his dear beloved son. Every believer has been called through the work of the Lord God to be a name and praise and glory for him on this earth. Every believer should grow up to the full measure stature of the thinking of my Christ. So when you're doing that, your internal blemish is cleansed. You walk with the Lord like Enoch walked. You look upon the Lord face to face through the word of the Lord. You'll be a faithful and humble servant as Abraham claims in Genesis 22 1. Lo, here I am, O Lord. You want to check me? You want to cross-check in me? You want to look into the things in me? Come back. Let's go for this adventure of your examination. And that's what he says when Lord put him to test. Come, I will take you to a new adventure. Can there be anything great adventure than this church age adventure in teaching to the angels through the church right now? When we grow up, we are making up even the rubbernecking angels to look what we have in the word of God in the church church. What a great privilege we have. Can there be any great advantage or any great adventure than this what we are enjoying every day? Because tomorrow, dear brethren, when we go back home, we are answerable to the Lord God for every breath we spent on this earth. Therefore, he demands, make up your account clean every day. Therefore, he teaches, make up your work every day to be clear. Keep up with the Lord God accounts clear. Not just the rebound of your sins, but the due portion on that day. And therefore, he says, Proverbs 8, 34 through 36, Those who love the word of Lord God, they love life. 
If you love the word of Lord God, you come daily before the temple gates could be opened up for the reason of learning the discourses being taught by the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in the pulpits, not female. Female haven't been given this gift. Female can teach to the female opponents. Sunday school, youth, they have a lot of patience as a teacher to teach. But as far as it comes to have authority, it is only to the male believer. And today, even female have become reverends, they have become bishops, they have become popes. You need to examine your own self in the mirror of the word of God and examine what extent, in what mannerism of cults you are surviving. Why will not the claim of Jeremiah 12.10 abide for us as well? As he says, in Second Timothy, after my departure, revenue's wolves will come. Be aware about that. They love to teach to you lies. And anything that is against the word of God, it is called as anti-Christ. And that spirit is in operation among the children of disobedience in the past as well as now in the present. They constantly claim the same things. They constantly go on to do the same things. What is anti? Instead of Christ, instead of the mind of Christ, what you have? You have the mind of these people. And they don't even have the fear that they have to go back and search in the original languages, being shepherds in the pulpits. They're so much happy and they're so much worried. How if they would teach the truth, they will lose their place of a pastor in the church. They will lose their income. They will lose their money. That's what they're, hap they're happening today in our pulpits. The pastor teacher is worried about his belly. The pastor teacher is worried about his family. Therefore, he doesn't want to speak the truth. They want to teach sugar-coated preachings. They want to make them to learn not to break up the fallow grounds any longer. They want to be the people blind leading the blind. And yet God the Father comes to teach us, keep up your clear account. Eat your food in a clean place. Next time whenever you eat your food, be aware. First, have you made the duty and the work of the Lord God in operation? Have you fulfilled the today's portion for you that has been prescribed in the Lord? And the way how you may think, I don't have any portion for me, because many people will think like that. Because it says for us that if you have done with the work of the Lord God, which cannot be, the word of the Lord God says, meditate upon this word day and night. It says for us, meditate upon the word of Lord God every day and every night. And it goes to say day and night. When is the gap for you? So today you may have your portion, the portion to know the will of God, the portion to understand by scrutinizing yourself with a very clear terms. That you pray before Lord God for other details, you need to have a very clear term, scrutinizing before Lord God to ask, to send shepherds after his own heart. To scrutinize your own heart and look how much of the harvest is still left over and how many laborers are few for us. And you have to scrutinize your own self and understand that being a disciple, he cannot be above his master, but... Everyone that is perfect, the word perfect is katarizo. Again, the same word we found in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 in comparison with 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We read that. This is what we wish, katarizo. The word for perfect is not telelios over here. It is called as katarizo. And you should be aware about that. The word katarizo meant to say to qualify you to become fit. By becoming sound and complete and to make you to repair or to mend your thoughts and to equip you and to arrange you and to make you to be perfect as one ought to be before the Lord. So he says, if you would qualify yourselves every day by carrying your cross, cleansing out the blemish in your thoughts and doing the will and the work of the Lord God, then you will be as a grammatias, you will go to preach the gospel, you will have no blame in word, and then you will be having no debility in you as well. 
There is no need for you to live a life like homo. There is no need for you to live a life like a lesbian. There is no need for you to become like the bestialities. But rather he would call you, you live a life with your wife, with your own wife, getting married to her and have the standards of your same conjugational relationship, what you have with her. That's the true life. Why you want to be a homo? Why you want to be a lesbian? Why you want to be a bestiality? He has not designed like that the man. Man is designed for the purpose of a woman, the natural use. In the same way, Lord God designed man for the glorification of God. Your natural use, but you're going to become homos by believing lies. You're going to become lesbians by practicing lies. And you're becoming bestiality worse than all the categories of the people to be called as in the standards of idol worships. And Christianity has been filled with such idol worships. Though he says, be aware about the idols. They don't look, they don't understand, they don't come out of such idols. Idols of weekly assembly, the church. Idols of paying monthly, the tithes. But when it comes to take up your cross and follow my Christ, looking upon the time, being the communicators of the word of Lord God, you say you're far away from that. You say, live that cataridzo process to the theologians or to the pastors, but every disciple, because you're born as a disciple, as a tech non-believer in the Lord. That's what John 1.12 says all about. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God because they're tech non-believers in Christ. And that's what is happening. The disciple, Mathates, cannot be above his master, but he has to become perfect like the master. Coming to the confirmation of his glory, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, being revealed for us. Romans 8, 28 through 30, particularly saying, predestined according to his pro gonisco and pro horizon knowledge of Lord God to confirm to the will of God the Father. Therefore, he says, he shall be perfect. And that is what he has to be. And if you aren't perfect as your master, then your life is not worth living on this earth. Because a blind cannot lead another blind. A blind having a man in his inner heart blemish, he cannot make others to be blemish free. Therefore he says for us in verse 41 of the same Luke 6, Why behold thou the mort? You know the mort? A small dry stalk or a chaff that is in the brother's eye. But perceivest not that you have a beam. A beam is nothing but a big taking hold of a great timber but you have beam in your own eye do you know what does it mean to say you haven't become a disciple you haven't joined as a grammatist to the lord yet and you love to go and preach others trying to clear their internal blemish be aware you're a blind man still because you haven't come to the catharids or process of the master you haven't reached, as Colossians 1, Apostle Paul says, want to make every believer perfect and complete in the sight of the Lord God. You haven't reached that. And yet you lack. And you love to have your food in a clean place. <laughs> really, the man on this earth is so much cunning in the details of life. Do you think he will eat some rotten food? No, never. Do you think he will eat that rotten food, a good food in a rotten place? No, never. He would say the things are not clanned. But how about your internal blemish? How about to be the children of light working in the children of light as in the children of day? Do you think you have fought a good fight so you will rest? When? Till you die, we are a pilgrimage trip on this earth. We cannot have that rest. Our fellow men are perishing, our people are perishing without knowing my Christ. They should come back to the epinosis knowledge, not just gnosis, but epinosis knowledge in Christ. And God the Father says, you be blind, you cannot lead another's blind. As Uzziah led them, you have to be the people where he says for us, that you have to become like the master. The disciples is not above the master, but they have to be perfect. The word katerizo, what a word it is for us to make you to mend, to repair, and to make you to be complete, which you are due unto the Lord to be in Christ. And that's what he says, your mind has to be fit, your mind has to be framed, your mind has to be prepared and restored. 
become katarizo from the place where you have fallen. Therefore, Colossians 3 talks about, particularly verse 10 and 11. We have to be like the children, what he planned us to be, in the image of God before we fell. That's what he claims. Be like the master. That's why we have given you the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why he teaches to us very specifically, again and again, the completed kind of scripture given to you. Now we have in our hands the exegesis. Go back and train them up. Go back and teach them up. Go back then lead them up. How many things are there for us to learn from this great word of God? And yet, we think we are eating food in a clean place. Dear brethren, time is short. As being priests, we have to eat in a clean place. Then how about becoming kings in the Lord? In Proverbs 21, we have a word for us to learn, which teaches to us that relates of water, that's what it says in the Hebrew, but in the English, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. That's what in the English, but in the Hebrew it says, relates of water. Do you know the relates meant to say the stream of rivers? The same thing in John 7 we have been said. Those who be under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, out of his belly will flow. Streams of water, the same thing over here. The water, like the relets, it flows when the heart of king is in the hand of Jehovah. And when you are making to flow relets of water, then you are controlled or your heart has been controlled by Jehovah and your heart is in the hand of Jehovah. And that's what every believer has to be perfected in the law. And when he has been perfected in the Lord, so that his heart is in the hand of Jehovah, then he says, what he is desiring, he shall make the things to turn aside in that way. And therefore, Philippians 4, 8, the things which are honest, perfect, and complete in the sight of Lord God, that he will make us through work. And he says, touch not, taste not, handle not the unclean things of this world. So here we find that which is desiring, the Hebrew word is chapet, it's meant to say take pleasure. The things what he wants to take pleasure in us, in everything. He says he is making us to turn or extend or to pervert. And he makes us to walk his will, provided when relics of water flow through the heart. And that is the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit flow through us as children of light. And therefore we find the Spirit leadeth them many times before the completion of the canon in the book of Acts. For example, Philip the Evangelist, even Apostle Paul. And then we have a lot many things what the Spirit of Lord God could lead. For what? Only the great monuments of Lord God to be established on this earth, redeeming the time. And they have been recorded in the Bible. The things that haven't been recorded in the Bible, he says for us in John. Though, Bengal, he says, every tree is a scribe and the world is a page, though it cannot be filled because there are a lot more things what Christ Jesus, the Lord of God, has thought. And that will be an example for relics of water, streams of rivers that flow in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the king's heart. Because you are a king in Christ. And if you don't grow up using your privacy of your priesthood, eating in a clean place to become the king of this work, then your heart is not in the hand of Jehovah. And when your heart is not in the hand of Jehovah, you will not desire or will not fulfill the desires of the Lord God's work on this earth. And that's what it happens. So dear brethren, we need to be aware, saying that, on every of the way which God the Father desires, we should be, Lord, here I am, fulfilled through us. The good pleasure, what we read in Isaiah 53.10. The holy arm of the Lord God being purchased with a great price in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Lord, here we are. 
lead us in the path that we need to go. Fulfill your desires. We are only your slaves. As the call was been said, no one has said, get it. So we are to be the cult of the Lord, fulfilling only the will and the desire of Lord God to reign Christ on us. Till he could come back and do the things in his millennium and then in the new heaven and the new earth. Though the world may not recognize, they may think what a foolish thing it is to spread their clothes and to make Lord God to walk on that cult. But now it is, because he comes in great peace. And he comes in great glory to the highest through every believer's life who has reached to clear an account of accountability given to them every day by graduating to be like the master and becoming perfect like him. Dear brethren, understand these things because for every man the way for him may seem right because they think their course of life is great. But it is your whole Lord of a God who knows what are your hearts, and He leads them to ponder over it. So, when He's pondering over our hearts, can we be found still blemish, no sauce? Can we be found yet in our debility standards? Or can we be the people to be aware and not to be ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan, as we read even in the example of Nehemiah chapter 6? saying that when they come as a false prophetess and they say, you shall be killed, you shall die this, and yet he perceives, the word is very clear for us, perceives, in Nehemiah chapter 6. And the word, what is that perceive? That's what we are lacking today, to perceive. He says for us in Nehemiah chapter 6, that word, what has been counted to be as perceive in the Greek, in the Hebrew, sorry, it says for us that, the word is nothing but nakar. And the word nakar meant to say to discern, to recognize, to regard, by paying attention to acknowledge the things, and to become not as a foreigner, but with proper scrutinization to really know what they're planning. So here they say, calling him four or five times, but he says, no, how could I be far away from the work of the law? I am in a great work of the Lord. I cannot stop this. They try to fear him out. And then he perceives. They try to fear him out with a false prophetess, Nobadiya. And then he goes on to talk, saying that Toheb and Sanballat has hired them. So he perceives. How did he perceive? Because he know when the work of Lord God has to be done, he will do it. And he says for us, the authority given to us, go and make disciples. Then why we fear? We have to perceive the truth. We have to know. And knowing is nothing but learning. And learning is nothing but being teaching for you. And teaching by the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher and exegesis for you. Then only you can learn. And learning you can know. And when you know, then you perceive where you are, why you are. And why you are where you are in this church age. Dear brethren, these things may seem silly to you, but these are your life. Every day carrying your cross is your life. Turning out to become great disciples and grammatias is your life. Turning out to become like the master is your life. Called to do the will of God the Father is your breath. Because if your relates of waters are not flowing through the stream of your bellies, then your heart is not in the hand of Jehovah, and neither you are fulfilling the desire of Jehovah. You are fulfilling the lustful patterns of your old sin nature, epithumai of your flesh, epithumai of your eyes, becoming Vagvan Brokadakai in this life, the pride of life. But as far as the will and the work and the word of the Lord of God is concerned, you have been zero zero point zero zero. Because your heart is not in the hand of Jehovah because you are not making the rivers or relets of waters to flow throughout in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit by becoming to walk with the Lord God in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit face to face. Therefore you find all reasons, all excuses, all alibis. Yet God the Father says back before 
Christ our Lord our God says in Matthew 9 38 beg before God the Father to send you shepherds after his own heart to send you harvesters after his own heart who shall work because there are very few harvesters being thoroughly prepared by the will of God in establishing the glory of God if everyone would come back rather than to be a hired servant because hired servants will come to kill and destroy But the true servants will come to lay down their life and soul to the work of the Lord. And therefore, even not to perish a single soul, a great lesson being taught for us in the wisdom of First Kings chapter 3. The two women, the two prostitutes, women who were the sons, what they had. The one who is really her mother, her vows earn up and she says, don't kill, give it to her. The same thing yet, why Lord God, the Father has kept us alive on this earth, though we grieve, squelch and wax, because he has purchased you to be called as a spirit of adoption. Crying out of a father to be his sons. He doesn't want you to perish foolishly, as he did in Jonah chapter 4. He teaches a lesson to Jonah. They are not able to discern between right and left. How could I kill them? The same man over here. Though it was in the standards of rising them up upon the bullock cart, Uzziah, he gave them a chance till they could wake up. And yet negligence was to the core. So he kills them. The same thing for us. Warning discipline, intensified stage of discipline. And yet there is negligence for you not to come back and do the will of God. You die sin unto death. Therefore he says, let him live in this world. Let him live with her, the false mother. But the wisdom of Solomon records, he judges her to be his right mother and hands over to her, the kid. And it's a very great chapter for us to understand as well, being shepherds. Hired servants would say, kill him off. The true servants who come to service the Lord God would say, we have compassion on them because the laborers are few. And they come to teach many things for them in the word of God. Mark 6.34 And yet there are people who love to make having a dual mind and think that they're really serving the Lord, but yet in return, they're serving their own belly. Philippians 3, 18 and 19. Their glory is their shame, their God is their belly, because they mind earthly things. The earthly things, one will be like that mother asking to cut off the baby into two pieces. But at Christ, O oh Lord our God, giving you grace, let him live. Today or tomorrow he may come, because... A sinner who repents and comes back to do the will of God will be a great joy in the heaven. And he knows even the time on the cross for one of the thieves he gave chance. So he knows till when you could be on this earth as wicked. And when the right time comes through the word of God, how you may change to become once again the same sinner promulgating the grace of God and being a true believer to the Lord. But yet here we find many hypocrites to the core because they act as if they have been really saved, but in reality they are far away from the reality of the word of truth. So dear brethren, think and understand over these things as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory to cleanse our heart and to cleanse the beam in our eyes, far less we look more in other man's eyes. By making our account clear to walk in the presence of the Lord, by becoming his grammatias, our grown-up scribes. And from there on to be the work of evangelism, to cleanse the nauseous blemishes in our soul. And then to be clear in our flesh, no general debility. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. So with our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to to Lord God the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, 
that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for so very simple believing christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine where with you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teachers the greatest matter is to carry the thorn like on herald the word in season out of season because the day of my witnesses where you have been called a number one day of my witnesses in wearing trinity followed by bible in our hands a number two day of my witnesses are hearers if there are no hearers dear brother not worry besides nature the entire and the course will be witnesses and what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter however the chips may fall So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. It's your life. We all need to be the children of light, walking in the glory of God the Father. Never lose your time, but redeem the time we have been stood, that is, purchase the time. The Kairos moments in this chronological time, purchase it in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, because... you have a great privilege to be indwelt by lord god the holy spirit in this church age where with even moses longed for it but he couldn't have what we have today think over these issues we shall come back and continue tomorrow infinitely divine holy father what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word father we pray that lord god the holy spirit would challenge and bless us by this message in christ's name we ask so in lord the lord god the holy spirit enlighten us by these things amen